It's the I Can't Mom Today podcast with Heather, the new mom, and Vera, the <clears throat> seasoned mom. I Can't Mom Today. Hey, this is Vera and Heather back again with another episode of I Can't Mom Today podcast. Hi, Vera. Hey, Heather. How are you? I am fabulous, except for it's cold. I know it's not that cold here in Florida. I complain because it's like 38 degrees and <laughs> other people are in 14 degree weather, but it's cold for me. Okay. My boss was just talking about that yesterday that um, some shelters were opened up in Florida because the temperatures got down to 60. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, but it goes down I mean, below not that 40. People have like, to bring use, in your cats. <laughs> not that people have to use shelters, but the fact that it's 60. Yeah, I know, which is like nothing compared to other people. So yeah, other than that, I'm good. You know, it messes with my arthritis, but you know, which yeah. sounds so old. It's rheumatoid. So um, but other than that, I'm fabulous. How about you? So sleepy. Baker got a flu shot, which we realized we had never given him one. (laughs) And so we're like, ah, we should probably go get him one. And he was coming off of a cold, but he was like pretty good. And then he got a fever and then he got runny nose again. And then like Saturday night, he's like, my eyes hurt like two hours in the middle of the night. And then night before last, he woke up at like four, just super cranky. And then last night it was just on and off for hours. So I'm super tired. And this morning he was whining. I was like, I can't do this today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and really? but, you know, you I know how I'm today. Go figure. I was just trying to, you know, change that mentality. But today I was like, today is not the day, friend. Like I have had like four hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. Like pick out your shirt. So we went yeah. to school with a rain, <laughs> rain jacket <laughs> and Crocs. Oh, that's funny. With socks on because, you know, it's 30 degrees here. I wonder if you could gauge the like, you know, what kind of day is a mom having by what their children end up showing up at school wearing? I know. <laughs> and I like, like, is it on the right way? <laughs> like, is it on the inside out? <laughs> constant. Just like, I don't, I don't. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my mind, child. I know. But he's out of the house. He's healthy. He's fed. He has clothes. There you go. Not the most appropriate. So I told the teacher, I was like, tell me if he's, his feet get cold outside. Oh yeah. I, mean, I used to worry about that too. Cause I wouldn't, cause Ar- Luke would argue. Cause again, it doesn't get colder that much, but it would. Yeah. And Luke would say, I don't want to wear a sweatshirt or a jacket or whatever. I'm like, whatever. Well, freeze. Just- yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sure that the, the mothers are like, or the, the parents, other parents and teachers are like, Hmm. But you know, again, this is like, it's 50 degrees. It's not like 30, but still. Yeah. Well, he only goes outside twice. He has a heavy jacket at school. I'm not, I'm not really that concerned, but still yeah. I was just like, holy cow, buddy. <laughs> oh, I can't mom today. I know. Luckily it started early. Otherwise I would not be here on time again. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We'll forgive you. So and speaking of we, we have, uh, we have my sister, Claire. Say hi, Claire. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Yeah. Um, She's joining us today because we, well, it's obviously a very hot topic and has been for a while is bullying. Mm -hmm. And Claire, who has a PR firm, a PR firm up in the Northeast, as well as a publishing company, correct? Yes. And um, book publishing. She had the opportunity to become involved with, well, become trained a certified bullying prevention instructor. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, I was a trainer. Exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. I was the uh, bullying prevention trainer. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that, what you did and, and um, how you got involved in it. Well, I was doing PR for my business and I got involved. I was asked to do PR for uh, the Olvaeus Bullying Prevention Program, which is run by Clemson University. That's where all of the research is done. It's an evidence-based program in bullying prevention. And Hazelden Publishing at the time, which does behavioral health curriculum for schools and all kinds of other things, they uh, had developed a curriculum for it for elementary and middle schools and were working into high schools. And I was involved in promoting it around the time that Phoebe Prince, who was a high school student up in Massachusetts, committed suicide. And there was a bunch of legal stuff regarding that and, and question about prosecuting people that the kids that were bullying her, which is what she said had, uh, she had indicated had led her to commit suicide in the information that she left behind. So I was involved in doing that and doing a national campaign for them. And it was very hot at that time. This was in the early 2010s, I guess, around 2013, 2014. 
And then I got very into the program, working with these um, psychiatrists and researchers and learning about what they were finding out. And I also had two kids at the time in elementary school, and it seemed like uh, something that I could do that might be useful. So I took their training class, which is really set up to train people to train schools and institutions like the YMCA or you know anything that deals with kids to um, implement the program. Cool. And did you end up witnessing or being involved with any of those institutions or did you kind of like just move on from that? No, I was involved. I was involved with uh, certainly from the working in the PR capacity. I mm-hmm. was involved with schools and principals. And uh, I, for example, went and sat in on the um, superintendent's meeting in the state of New Jersey, which, you know, at the time, you may recall, some people may recall that there was all legislation was going crazy all across the country. All states were enacting different legislation for bullying prevention. And one of the things that they did up in the Northeast, in the state of New Jersey, for example, is make every district have a bullying prevention specialist. And so I was, uh, I sat in on the meetings, some of the meetings where that, where that stuff was implemented. And schools have somebody who's a bullying counselor, either somebody who's trained as a bullying counselor or who is, uh, you know, some kind of certified bullying counselor, specifically specialist. But there are, there was all sorts of legislation enacted. I think in Minnesota, which is where Hazelden is based, there was some of the earliest legislation. And we did bullying prevention, like awareness seminars and panels all across the country because October actually has a week that's dedicated to bullying prevention. And so we would do major campaigns at that time and local television would show up. And so it was a, it was a big deal, really trying to generate a lot of awareness, you know, to help kids deal with, deal with these kinds of conflicts. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I know we've touched on uh, bullying a little bit on our show, but we are not experts by any stretch of the imagination. From your experience and your training in this course, is it like what what can parents do? Because I know my instinct would be to like, I'm going to go talk to, you know, whatever. But if it was my mom, I would be like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Stop, mom. Why are you doing this? Like, yeah. you're just making right. it worse. Yeah. Well, well, well oh, go ahead. The majority of what the, the the course teaches is really about sort of how to do conflict conflict resolution and uh, sort of when to escalate something and when to deal with it on you know a kid to kid level and there were, were all kinds of you know there were role plays and things involved in you know learning how to uh, have discussions and you know it's sort of like like I can tell you from my own experience personally even because of my training when I deal with bullying situations with my kids. You know, my first thing is to, if you know, I test it out to see if I really think it is bullying. So I'll say, well, why don't you try talking to the person or why don't you, you know, try working it out, basically. Yeah. And when it's repetitive, like recently I had a situation with my younger daughter in middle school where this one kid who has been her friend for a long time, but she has, you know, what I consider to be sort of a, a little bit of a mean streak. And so she she can be... <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and she she tends to sort of adopt a, a kid, adopt a friend and then sort of torment that friend at the same time. So, oh. um, and she will gang up when she's with other girls, it gets worse. She'll gang mm. up and stuff. And so my, my daughter was telling me about her lunch being stolen, you know, taken every day and about being, you know, called really horrible names and all this kind of stuff. And so I went, I had already gone to the guidance counselor to talk about this one other time. So I went first, I said, you know, why don't you try to deal with it with your friend friend to friend. That Mm -hmm. didn't work. So then I went to the guidance counselor and the guidance counselor brought them in and talked to them together and tried Mm -hmm. to, you know, do some kind of conflict resolution situation. And um, then that didn't work because it kept happening and kept happening and kept happening. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, getting to the point where these kids actually figured out a way to sort of manipulate the counselor so that the counselor thought that things were fine. But then, you know, once they got out of the room, everything went back to where it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I escalated it all the way to the associate principal because there was some biting involved and some oh. physical stuff that was happening. And so I escalated it and said and separated them completely and said, I do not want them in any electives together. I do not want them sitting together in class. I don't want them in the same homeroom. I want them completely separated. And and so the school, because they don't want me to get any more upset, mm-hmm. <laughs> they think yeah. doing that. So, um, but, you know, 
one of the main things, like I said, that, that you learn from this course is that, you know, the thing about bullying is that the, the definition of it is an imbalance of power. And if you think about it, when you have kids that are in these situations, like if you're the kid who doesn't have the cool clothes, you know, there's mm-hmm. some girl or boy or whatever who has the cool clothes and they'll they might pick on you because they're they're cooler than you or the, the perception is that they're cooler than you mm-hmm. or somebody who has more money or somebody who's bigger or somebody, you know, there's always this imbalance of power. Mm-hmm. And so, it, you know, it's about sort of looking at that situation and saying, okay, how can we, uh, how can we live, level the playing field in some way that's constructive? But the other problem, too, with bullying is that the studies and data have shown that most of the people who are bullying someone are people who have serious problems. You know, they have, they're, they suffer from the most depression. They suffer from the most anxiety, these kids mm-hmm. that are bullying. So it's very, very, you know, it's a delicate situation because a lot of the people who, you, you can see it in the school shootings and all this other kind of stuff, these people that are just really, really unhappy kids or have a serious problem are often the ones that are causing the most pro- pro- most trouble. Mm, that's interesting. And did you find, did they touch on the idea that, you know, because I have a son and you have two daughters, on the fact that perhaps it might be even more difficult with girls because that's my perception. Like Luke, my son was bullied by girls. Like he didn't really, he had a problem with one boy at school, but it was just so, it was more physical. It was a lot less insidious, you know, it was just more, I'm going to beat you up. And so of course, Luke has been doing karate his whole life. He talked to his sensei, you know, the karate idea is Mm -hmm. you don't use your power unless you have to. And so the karate instructor said, literally, well, if you're on the playground, you run away from the kid. And if that doesn't work, then run to somebody who can help you. And if that doesn't work, then beat the crap out of him. You know, I didn't say that exactly, but you know what I mean? Like, go ahead, knock him out. But once the school really saw what was going on and picked up on it, the kid was suspended and then I think expelled. But the stuff that I hear about that girls do, and even some girls did to Luke, like using social media and just these like like mental games that that they seem to do and am i just making a huge generalization or did they touch on that at all in your training well one of the things that i learned is that uh the there's a sort of there are differences in the amount and types of bullying that go on varying through age groups mm-hmm. so you know like in elementary school uh Boys, there, there tends to be more bullying in sort of elementary school up through early middle school on boys with boys. And I think that's because of more sort of the physical thing and sort of testing mm-hmm. out your, you know, like your your strength and your strength. brutishness or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then with, with girls, not to say that it goes away completely with boys, but it increases in, in middle school. They become the higher, you know, in terms of the amount of bullying that girls are involved in. And... um so, you know, in a way, there isn't really a distinction in terms of like, oh, you know, is it worse with girls or boys? It's just that it's it's different. Mm. Um, the majority of a lot of bullying incidents happen on in the lunchroom, on the schoolyard and on the school bus. Mm-hmm. That's where a lot of it happens. And what I've found and at the time that I worked with Olvaeus, you know, they did a lot of studies on cyberbullying and talking about whether or not cyberbullying was actually um, on the on increasing bullying in general. And what they found was that cyberbullying really isn't about an increase in bullying. And what I've interpreted that to mean is that it's a, it's a way, it's just another way of perpetuating the bullying. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily that it increases it, it just makes it 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's been my experience, you know, and that's where you get, I think, uh, I mean, I've seen it with boys and with girls. Um, mm-hmm. My, you know, a lot of times, you know, both of my daughters being that they're, you know, both sort of in middle school and high school, they are tormented by friends, by girls' boyfriends. And it's kind of like the girl eggs on the boyfriend to torment Mm -hmm. them. And yeah, where they get, you know, they'll get texts and things that are um, sort of um, they're suggestive or uh, just plain inappropriate. And Mm -hmm. um, and then they find out that there's a, you know, the the oh, my boyfriend got a hold of my phone, you know, or, um, you know, some kind of excuse comes from the girl, but you then you got to wonder where that, you know, where that comes from. Yeah. And so that's, that. It, it, I found that with the social media, it's, 
it, it's just that it never stops. There's no place to go. Like when you used mm-hmm. to, when you were a kid and you were being tormented at school, you came home and that was like your safety zone. Okay, I'm not being tormented at home. Yeah. But then you were afraid to go to school. Mm-hmm. Now they're tormented all the time. <laughs> you yeah. know, it never goes yeah. away. And anything that happens outside of school is not the school's responsibility. It's mm-hmm. yours. So the school can't do anything with anything that happens not on the school grounds or on school property or school bus or whatever. So you're just kind of like this stuff starts in the school environment and then Mm -hmm. you're stuck with it at Mm home. Yeah. Uh, So it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. And I think it's really important for parents, you know, just talking about what people can do. It's really important to have an open dialogue with your kids because I've seen people try to monitor it and manage it in all sorts of ways, you know, kind of like shut it down, you know, you take away the phone have, or no social yeah, take media away the phone and all that. Right. But there just isn't any way to be away from it because it's just an integral part of their socialization and their lives. And, it, you know, the schools are using technology. There just really isn't any way to get completely away from it. So I try to, you know, keep sort of as much as, as I can as an open dialogue and, and just sort of establish some trust where I don't butt into everything, but the Mm -hmm. agreement is if anything happens that's strange or weird, you have to tell me. And I just had a situation last night where one of my daughters was like crying and came to me and said, you know, I have to talk to you about this. And somebody was tormenting her Mm -hmm. on, you know, through texting and social media and, you know, spreading rumors and all this other kind of stuff. So, Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's where I would see too, like the, the ability of the rumors to be spread <laughs> so much more quickly and easily with the, the social media tool or and exactly. texting, well, you know? Yeah. I mean, my younger daughter, like somebody said that she was uh, accused, well, accused, it's not really an accusing, but was going around, in, this is in sixth grade, telling everybody that she was a lesbian in school, Ugh. passing that around. And like, you know... <laughs> And like, kind of who like, cares? Like, what if she? Right? Yeah. Like, what does it matter? Like, exactly. I mean, she was yeah, she was eleven, so it's yeah. like you know, we don't really like. Who cares? But I mean, I think that what the opportunity here is because this is a part of our our society. Mm. It doesn't go away when you mm. grow up. You know, I mean, the bullying. There's bullying in the workplace. There's bullying. I mean, these people that are like this. That that um, when, when there is an imbalance of power, and there's a person who's so inclined to take advantage of that mm-hmm. and to treat somebody else poorly, there's no running away from that. So I think it's a really an opportunity to teach resilience, which is such an important hot topic also in raising kids these days, because there's so much information and so much that, you know, supposedly there's privacy, but really there's so much less privacy. And teaching kids how to deal with that and how to sort of develop a thick skin, I think I think that that's really important. And, you know, these prevention programs, including Olveus, which is wonderful when you're in elementary school and teaching sort of the basics of socialization and communicating through conflicts and resolution and all that stuff. Once you're in high school and late middle school, you really have to, you, you're going to have to sort of figure out a way to get through it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they're just... I, that's my opinion. I mean, that may be horrible. Maybe your listeners will be like, who is that crazy woman? <laughs> so. No, but well, that's what I'm, you mentioned resilience. And yeah. what do you, did, what do you think are some things that we can train our kids? And again, this isn't exactly your area of expertise, but like what has come into your mind dealing with the, the bullying you've dealt with, with your girls, like what has come into your head about, teaching them resilience? Like, what have you come up with? Well, I think it's like I said, I mean, I tried to to have them manage situations on their own as much as they they could, you know, Mm -hmm. to try to have conversations with people that were being a pain in the neck. And if it was something that wasn't going to be resolved through any kind of dialogue, then to just, you know, avoid the person. And if that still wasn't working, then, you know, then to take it to the next level, I certainly did that with my older daughter who was in a school environment, a private school where there was one class of for each grade and she was being tormented. She started in the fourth grade and by seventh grade, she could hardly go to school. I mean, she was so miserable mm-hmm. and, you know, we really wanted to try to get her to finish through eighth grade, which is when the school ended. But I, you know, I, I, I started to observe it myself. I got more involved in the school stuff. I started going to school more. I was at, you know, like the book fair. I was, she was in the basketball team. So I was at the games and I was watching and I definitely was like, this cannot be resolved. And so I took her out of school and put her somewhere else. Yeah. Um, 
that is something that's actually happening, at least in my area of the country. It's happening quite a bit where uh, kids are being yanked out of school and even homeschooled because of Mm -hmm. this difficulty with socialization. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's about being open, you know, teaching the kids resilience in that trying to teach them like we all, like, you know, generations before us supposedly were teaching their kids, you know, to be a good person and to, Mm -hmm. you know, be, to, to really spend time with your kids enforcing those messages and to lead by example. I mean, a yes. lot of stuff can be coming from the house too. You know, mm-hmm. like if your parents, you, you just don't realize that the kids are like sponges. And I, I mean, this is, of course, I'm not an expert. I'm not a psychologist, but just being around my children and seeing them grow. I mean, you notice that, that they start to like repeat things back to you that you said. Yeah. Like, you're like, you're holy like, cow, it's me. <laughs> I know. How did, did you, how did you actually pick up on that? And, yeah, you know, and it's scary. It so, is. I, you know, you have to lead by example and you have to also tell you know, let your kids know that, that it's not appropriate to be treated that way, that they deserve to stand up for themselves, that you are supporting them in their ability to stand up for themselves and to, to try to go through the proper channels. And then if all else fails, you'll try to help them solve the problem, but you have to give them the opportunity also to try to solve it. And I think mm-hmm. that that's, that's where I see people sort of fall down and where I see a lot of these bullying programs fall down and dealing with counselors, I've seen it fall down, where the the social worker at the school or something does all of this sort of touchy-feely you know, stuff and is completely blind to the fact that once those kids leave her office, they're back mm-hmm. to whatever they were doing. Yep. Real, realistically, that's what happens. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yes. So we have to, you know, like it's not, and that's, you know, including. You'll see that in the grown up world, too. I mean, you'll see that in right. the grown up world, you know, at work and you're having issues with somebody, and HR calls everybody in and says, well, we need to work this out, kumbaya. Oh, and, yeah. leave, and then the person's still a turd. <laughs> you know? Right, I know. And so then it becomes your choice. You know, what do you do? Are you going to stay and continue to work with that person? Do you get transferred if you're in a big enough company to another place? Mm-hmm. Do you leave the job and do something else? You know, it becomes then your choice on how you deal with it. Mm-hmm. But the construct, you have to have constructive ways of handling things and not choosing like the worst possible option, which is where you get somebody like D.B. Prince who you know, ended her life. Yeah. And um, recently, you know, I don't know, I, I've, I've just been aware of a lot of that. And you know, there have been a couple of middle school students who have, you know, committed suicide in the past couple of months in my area, and also a couple of high school students. And, you know, I don't know, you know, there are a whole lot of reasons for why that happens. And I did work with a suicide prevention program also, and that's a whole other topic. But, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like we have to let them, there is hope. You know, it's not like this all the time. You're not powerless and you're not a victim. You know, I right. think that's very important. You're not a victim. You have some choices and parents are here to help you implement some choices that are going to be effective and that are going to preserve your, you know, your life as much as possible so you yes. can enjoy being a kid. Exactly. Yeah. And as a parent listening, trying to listen, like you've said earlier, that listening to, to what your child is going through and trying to be open and keeping that dialogue open, I think is so important. And touching too, actually, I mean, this is more on the suicide prevention angle a little bit, but I wanted to say, just because I just happened to see this the other day, Jerry and I watched that um, Sunday morning show every Sunday. It's like, yeah. That's for us. It's, it's usually, it's positive. You know, I like it. It's very yeah. interesting stories and it's very positive. It's a nice way to spend your Sunday morning. And um, they had a, 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 you know, one of their little snippets or whatever was on um, this psychiatrist who did a study where people who were having suicidal thoughts, and of course this was several decades ago when a lot of psychiatrists still even thought suicide was just a, a means of getting attention. Mm. Um, which is sad that they would think that, um, but they did. Uh, and, you know, that was before a lot of research. And one of the things that this guy did was he, half of his patients um, that left the, you know, his institution or left his care, uh, he would send a note every so often to saying, hey, just checking in on you to see how you're doing, letting you know that we care. And if you need anything, please let us know. And the suicide rates and the people that he sent those letters to was like 50% less, Uh which is huge. I mean, that's a lot of people. And, um, sat and they did, you know, they, they did some due diligence on that and found that, 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 that data was, uh, you know, I mean, it was staggering. And 
I, it's unfortunate that they haven't totally followed that through the, the, the big they. But I think on a personal level, if there is like, you know, especially with your own child, first of all, like you said, keeping that dialogue open. But even if you see another kid who might look or, you know, your kid sees another kid that looks sad or, mm-hmm. he, you know, is going through something, even teaching our kids to say, hey, are you OK? Do you need anything? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, or telling, you know, your kid telling you like, hey, Bob looks like he's going through a rough time. Do, do you know Bob's parents? Maybe you should talk to him because there's some stuff going on at school that maybe he's not telling his parents or, you know, mm-hmm. to just keep right. that open even for other kids. Yeah, and that is one of the things actually in the program that I studied that was also, that was one of the sort of different things too in that particular program, this idea of bystanders, people who observe stuff happening Mm -hmm. and how a bystander, you know, can go and and report something, you know, tell someone, tell an adult, you know, or tell, tell someone. And I've had, I definitely have had situations where my kids have said stuff like, you know, so-and-so got this awful text on her phone from so-and-so and I'll be like, well, did her, do her parents know? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what did you guys do about it? And so, and then I sort of stay on top of it until I see it sort of like follow through to the left because I don't want to be the person that goes and betrays a trust between the right. kid and my daughter, unless mm-hmm. it's something that's really, you know, if, if it's life threatening, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, yeah. Name well, I've started it. to do that. Yeah, name calling it. But there's well, and I've gotten lucky in that with Luke's friends. I'll have the opportunity to like, like, well, they'll they'll spend the night and they'll come and you know yeah. come and talk to me, and then start. Next thing I know, they're starting to tell me stories about things going on at school, and I just try and keep like an open ear. And like you said, I don't want to betray a trust because I think it's good that they feel comfortable talking to an adult about things that are going on in their world, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but then my, I'm like, my ears are always a little perked, like, okay, is so-and-so okay? Do I need to find their parents or talk to the school about this, or should I let the kids work it out, you know? So uh, the, the dialogue can work in several different directions. I, th- I like that that bystander term makes a lot of sense. Well, I think even if it's not affecting your child directly, if your child knows about something and then something happens to that other person, I think it will, it's, uh, it's so detrimental to even their person, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's, it will affect them. I think more by not doing something in the long run if something else happens, you know, and this is all ifs and what have you, but, but like, you know, and you don't want to betray a friend, but at the same time, like if they're, if they're saying things like, you know, I just don't want to live or something like that, like that's, a big statement. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And something to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Claire, do you think that this would be a good program for parents to take in general? Or is there a parent course that they can take through this program? Just thinking, you know, because that's something that I would like to do just to be able to acknowledge what? Yeah. Well, you know what I can do? Is I, can send, I can send you guys the website and you can, I don't have it up on my computer right now, but you can look yeah. at um, you can check it out and see see what they what they have. Let me just see if I can. Yeah, go well, we can to post it. it on our Facebook page too. So if, yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you too that where the program came from is also very interesting because it was actually written and this guy up, up to a few years ago he was still alive. I'm not sure if he's still alive, but <laughs> now no. but he's from Norway. And what happened, and this is just such an interesting thing because it's so different from how things are here and probably because it's a smaller country, but um, in Norway, there were these, there was a rash of suicides among high school boys and the mm-hmm. government went to this guy who was a psychiatrist and said, we need you to, to investigate this for us. And that's where this whole bullying prevention program came from because he, he studied sort of the high schools and the dynamics and then came up with this whole thing, um, how to sort of deal yeah. with um with these things. And I just thought because the government actually contracted with him, I thought that that was sort of interesting. That's yeah. revolutionary. Um, <laughs> it is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I really, and there, there actually is a, is a book called, it's called the Olaus Bullying Prevention Programs. And there's a school wide guide, which is the one that comes up here, but they're at Clemson university. So if you go to the Clemson website and then, I'll send you the website address. Yeah, we can post it on our Facebook and put it on our um, um, YouTube and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you spell Alveus? 
O L W E U S. Ah, well, that the Nor- Norway is it because of the Norwegian roots? Yeah, Alveus. Okay, O L W E U S. So somebody could probably do mm-hmm. a search on that too. That might, mm-hmm. might help them get to where yeah. they need to go. Okay, okay. I'm gonna send this to you though. Right, I'm sending it to you now on my oh, computer. Cool. Sure. Okay. So you have it. So. Awesome. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And then, like I said, that way we can post if somebody's there driving around or whatever and can't we'll post it on our facebook page so well thank you so much claire did you have any other questions heather or anything else that- i did it i think it's a great resource that you know i'm definitely going to look into because i'm i have a small child that's not in even in elementary school but i taught elementary ah. school so i've seen it firsthand yeah with kids and yeah. you know just nastiness yeah, yeah, and yeah, and it starts like with like you know in preschool, it's like throwing cereal at each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, so. flying Cheerios. I mean, I throw, <laughs> I throw Cheerios all the time. So, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe that's just so, maybe that's just our like coping mechanism. For, like, exactly. <laughs> I throw stuffed animals at Baker when he's not paying attention. Oh, okay. like just to get like I'm like Baker, 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 and then I'll toss. Oh yeah, him. right, yeah, right. It's like Stewie from Family Guy, Mama, 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 oh, that's that's right. Mama, 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 yeah. Mama, Mama, Mama. Mama. <laughs> I feel so like true. that all the time, but to the other person who does that is my husband, oh. Claire. Where? 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 <laughs> <No>. What? <laughs> what do you want from me? Like somebody, please not want something for me for just a few minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. If one more person asks me for something, I am going to um, dig a hole in the ground and bury exactly. myself. <laughs> At least my head. Do the ostrich. I went for sure. I just felt. I said that to Jerry just the other day. I was like, "Who else wants something from me? I don't have anything left." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I asked for a cup of tea. <laughs> right, exactly. Are your arms I know. broken? I know. Yeah, exactly. I know. Are your arms broken? Right. Get right. your own damn yeah. tea. <laughs> right. My favorite is when it's dinner time or something and I've cooked dinner and it's like, what is this? Um, uh, I don't know. It's poison. <laughs> That's poison. <laughs> what is this? That's so funny. I'm slowly killing you with arsenic. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> like, what does it look like? I swear. What does it look like? Pasta for crying out loud. Just pasta with tomatoes <laughs> and cheese on it. For God's sake. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh my goodness! Yep, uh, I've heard all that before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or what, what time is, is it? There's like... a clock. Turn to the left. There's a clock. <laughs> I know what time is it. <laughs> what time is or... it? What is this? Do you know, are getting a text from the school? Sometimes we get texts from the school at the same time. And I keep track of all the school. I do all the school stuff, everything with the kids. And so yeah. I hear this like, um, do you know about la, 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 special education, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, but our kids aren't in special ed. So I just am not even, you know, I don't even Worried, address that. Yeah. It's like, well, but they're special. Oh. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> now what else do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> yep, oh, the joy. Well, God, thank you guys so much for having me and letting yeah. me um, go on about my little side passion there. No, <laughs> no, I think it's super it's helpful. So crucial. I do, and that's. Uh, I think it's very helpful, and it it is. It's such a delicate thing, and 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 so important, and so crucial, and you know, it just breaks my heart to think of any of our children, you know, being that desperate and sad, you know, so yeah. it's just anything that we can do to help. And even if just one person has the ability to get to the LVS information or Clemson and, and, and it helps them even just when Iota, I think it was totally worth it. So thank you for yeah. being with us. Yo, you're welcome. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yay. Okay. Well, if you want to go to our Facebook page, it's I Can't Mom Today. Uh, on Facebook and then I can't mom today podcast at I uh, YouTube. Of course we're on iTunes also, but YouTube and please subscribe because we need subscribers. And I can't mom today podcast at Gmail. Am I missing anything, Heather? No, I was just gonna play an old trick and be like, we didn't say YouTube. No, oh, <laughs> I did say YouTube. <laughs> I know, but I'm listening really hard now. <laughs> I know because because <laughs> she would always say, you didn't say YouTube. I'm like, I did. You never listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll just get so like. <laughs> 
you know, there's so many I can't mom today podcasts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, wait, which did she say? <laughs> it's a Gmail or it's a, oh, Instagram. I can't oh. mom today podcast at Instagram. I think I forgot Instagram. Yeah. And if you have any show ideas, definitely hit us up. We would love to hear them. Or if you have someone that you want us to interview, we would love to do that as well. You can reach out to us in all the previously mentioned formats. We are at like almost 5,000 downloads. So that's exciting. Woohoo! Yay. Yeah. 